Good evening, I'm Ryan Bonazzo. Thank you for joining us. Thunder Bay Police are warning the public about a recent spike in fentanyl overdoses. So far this month, first responders have been called to 36 suspected overdoses. 14 of those turned out to be fatal, including two deaths in the past 24 hours. Fentanyl seems to, the death seems to be a little more increased here. And yes, uh, it's staggering, it's bothersome. Uh, we're continuously meeting, we're continuously trying to develop new strategies of how to deal with it, and it's just overwhelming to us right now. Detective Inspector John Fennell says it's no longer simply considered to have been a bad batch or a certain type of drug. He says the widespread overdoses prove that fentanyl itself is poisonous, and police have often found it mixed in with other drugs in the community. Fennell is encouraging drug users to use safe injection sites, or to have someone else around, and they should always have a naloxone kit handy as well. If people are dependent on narcotic, and particularly in fentanyl, you know, talk to loved ones. If you don't want to come forward to the police, get some help. The problem with the fentanyl is it takes a very, very small amount. Uh, a nanogram is about the size of a sugar uh, crystal, and three of those can be fatal. So, and we're seeing overdoses in the hundreds. So uh, the message is, please go try to get some help. There's lots of social groups that will assist. You can call 911, we're here to help first, and then we'll deal with the drugs after. Uh, Fennell adds one of the problems police face is that most people who survive an overdose aren't willing to identify their drug dealer. So far in 2021, Thunder Bay has seen 149 overdoses 48 of those have been fatal. Well, police are asking for public help identifying a suspect in a disturbing incident at a city park. It happened Wednesday evening between 6 and 7 o'clock at the St. Jude School basketball court. Two girls aged 7 and 12 were playing on the court when they were approached by a man who exposed himself to the 7-year-old before fleeing the area. The man is described as bald, about five foot six, wearing a purple shirt, possibly with green stripes. He also had on gray sweatpants. Anyone with information about the incident is asked to contact Thunder Bay Police. Forest fires continue to burn across the northwest, but some larger blazes in the Red Lake area, which have been threatening several communities, appear to have halted their advance for now. That's thanks to some much-needed rainfall in the region and the mobilization of various firefighting assets. Adam Riley reports. Earlier this month, it looked like Red Lake residents might have to immediately evacuate the community en masse like they did last August. But this was the scene Monday at the Red Lake Airport. Helicopters parked and activity slowed. It was all thanks to some cooler weather and easterly winds that kept several of the fires threatening communities in the area at bay. That fortunate weather continued throughout the week and fully paid off on Thursday and Friday with only eight new fire starts, giving fire crews a chance to catch up. Compared to previous days, that's a lot less. Um, so that's that was a notable development. Um, so over the last you know the last week, fire rangers uh, have been trying to boost the number of uh, active fires in the region, and they've been you know essentially extinguishing anywhere from ten to twenty new fires per day. However, Scott notes there are still some larger fires out there, including Red Lake 51 at 51,000 hectares, Kenora 51 at 138,000 hectares, and Red Lake 77 at 23,000 hectares. That fire currently sits 20 kilometers west of Madsen and hasn't moved much, which is giving crews time to prepare. There's a total of like 30 pieces of heavy equipment and operators. They've been engaged in building approximately 40 kilometers of fire guard um, in strategic areas around the community. The municipality itself is prepared for a siege should the fire activity increase, with strategically placed water pools and sprinklers on vital infrastructure and the evacuations of residents and patients at the long-term care home and hospital in Red Lake to other facilities in the northwest. Mayor Fred Moda says unlike last year where residents had three to four hours to evacuate, things aren't as rushed now, but there are some concerns. In the community right now, we have a lot of smoke. Uh, it comes in and out with the different wind directions, but we're very dependent at this time on Mother Nature. And, and, and we need Mother Nature to help us out with rain, no lightning, 
and of course wind directions pushing back to the east. Two very intense fire seasons back to back has Moda hoping this isn't the new normal for Red Lake, but he maintains the utmost confidence in the province and the assets that are being deployed to the region. Adam Riley, TBT News. Well, some positive new news as well. There are reports that say evacuees from Poplar Hill who have been stationed in Kenora for the past week have now begun to return home. For the first time in more than two weeks, there's a new positive COVID-19 case in the Thunder Bay District. The health unit is reporting one new infection today. It's the first reported case since July 7th. Today's case is in the Thunder Bay area. The exposure source is still unknown at this time. There have now been 3,341 total cases across the district since the pandemic began. The health unit has also announced that it's changing its COVID-19 reporting. It will no longer provide daily case updates unless there are new infections. All Shoppers Drug Mart 24-hour locations across Ontario will host a COVID Vaxathon starting tomorrow morning. That includes the 24-hour location here in Thunder Bay. For 24 hours straight, the McIntyre Centre store will allow people 18 and older to walk in for either their first or second COVID shot. It's on a first-come, first-served basis. Local residents can get the Moderna vaccine anytime from 9 a.m. Saturday until 9 a.m. on Sunday. Associate pharmacist Valley Orchard says she's hoping for a good turnout. The location can accommodate about 12 to 15 patients per hour. That means it could give out more than 300 doses during the Vaxathon. It's to get a push to get them out of the way and also to, to let people know that it's still available and that we're available 24 hours a day. If, they, if they're looking for somewhere to go and they can't make one of those appointments, we're here for them. Vaccines are still available at the other shoppers' locations as well. Orchard hopes the Vaxathon will be a success and help get things in this region back closer to normal soon. On a similar note, as the slowdown in vaccine demand continues, health officials across the province are struggling to figure out what to do with extra vaccine supply. Now communities everywhere are looking at a range of options to help get those shots into arms and prevent them from going to waste. Natalie Johnson reports from Toronto. If you get fevers or chills and you're really uncomfortable, Take a Tylenol. Inside this Kingston Road Pharmasave, there is still demand for Pfizer shots. Three, boom, you're done. Pressure. But about 350 doses of the Moderna vaccine will go to waste here if they're not used before their August 2nd expiry date. Simply immoral. It is just sinful to take life-saving vaccines and toss them in the bin. The owner has no choice but to pitch them if they are not used before then, questioning why these doses can't be shipped off to other jurisdictions in need who are starving for COVID vaccines. It's going to be gut-wrenching knowing that this could have saved a lot of lives in other countries. Meanwhile, as the city seeks to ensure that every dose finds an arm, officials are hoping to administer thousands of shots tomorrow and Sunday. At a weekend clinic called Vax the North in Mel Lassman Square, targeted because many surrounding North York neighborhoods still have lower rates of vaccination. It's just a big open pop-up clinic. Anybody's eligible to come, but we want the people from around North York to come. There's going to be music. There's going to be uh, mascots from the Maple Leafs Sports and Entertainment people, the Raptors and the, uh, and the, and the Leafs, of course. Uh, there's going to be food, uh, but we just want people to come out and get vaccinated. And that includes people who have previously had COVID-19. The National Advisory Committee on Immunization has updated its guidance to stress that even people who were previously infected with the virus should receive two doses. That also is incorporating the understanding that people who have been infected and who have recovered still have some protective immunity to this virus. They do. We know that they do, but we also know that people can get reinfected. I didn't even feel a thing. The goal to make sure that every arm gets two doses and no doses have to hit the trash. Natalie Johnson, CTV News. Officials with Superior North EMS say they need more help as service calls in Thunder Bay continue to increase. That could be addressed at Monday night's City Council meeting. The service is recommending an organizational redesign that includes more staff and ambulance hours. Corey Nordstrom has the details. Our call demand has been going up over the years and uh, we're, we're now at a critical point where we really just can't keep up with it. Wayne Gates will be presenting to Thunder Bay City Council on Monday. 
The Superior North EMS chief is recommending a three-year, three-phase approach to address the significant stress levels on his staff. Currently have two cars that only run uh, five days a week on eight-hour shifts, and we're looking to expand those to actually 12-hour cars now and have them run seven days a week. And we're hoping that will give us the uh, bit of breathing room here. Being able to breathe easier after a stressful day is also outlined in the list as the service is looking to add a psychologist on contract. A lot of behind-the-scenes upgrading is necessary, according to Gates. EMS are looking to develop a community safety and planning division with more administrative support. And four additional employees are a part of the first phase of the plan to staff the expanded ambulance service. 2018 was the last time we added a 12-hour car in City Thunder Bay, and our call demand was just a little over 28,000 at this time. Uh, our current trend now shows we're going to be uh, over 32,000 calls in, uh, in 2021. A number of the solutions are aimed at addressing needs exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic, which also played a major role in the growing trend of calls for service that are not related to physical injury. Over the last two years, we've actually seen a, uh, a big demand on the mental health and addiction side as well. So we're being hit hard with that. And now, now that COVID has slowed down a little bit, we're not out of COVID yet. Uh, we're seeing some results of that as well. Corey Nordstrom, CBC News. Lakehead University held a graduation ceremony today for students who recently completed the inaugural Ascend Accelerator program. Hosted by Ingenuity, the program was a 12-week online boot camp designed to support the development of student-based business ideas and help young entrepreneurs kickstart new ventures. Along with funding provided by Fednor, the eight students responsible for the four business plans that were accepted were then provided with mentorship and weekly workshops. They were held accountable for milestone goals created throughout the program. Ingenuity Ma Manager Allison McKay says she was impressed with what the she saw. The first time I got to meet them in person, so that's extremely exciting. And just to be able to celebrate their success. You know, they come off of a school year and then they commit 12 weeks to doing this program. So just to be able to see them and celebrate them today is the greatest success there could be. It's been amazing. It's been incredible. We've met so many people. The networking has been fantastic. Um, and moving forward, I hope to still work with um, Ingenuity um, because this has been definitely life-changing for me. Um, I've learned so much more. Ingenuity Ascend is the place to be for sure. Although not all of the graduates could attend today's wrap-up celebration in person, each was recognized for their accomplishments as they now prepare to take their business ideas into the real world. Well, as your Friday news hour continues, it is an Olympics like no other.